I think if there's an award for the most poorly chosen title for Doctor Who episodes, it should go to this next Fortnite's selection of episodes entitled The Zygon Invasion and The Zygon Inversion. Like, I know the episodes so far have been titled in a kind of paired up fashion because it just makes sense, however this is just outright lazy. I think it would have been better to just call these episodes The Return of the Zygons Part 1 and 2 or Truth or Consequences or something along those lines. Though it's not really a surprise considering this came from the dude that wrote Kill the Moon last year. I know that Kill the Moon is now on par with two episodes that were released this year and we've had an even worse episode than Kill the Moon as well, but it just seems iconic to compare episodes with that one considering it was just a massive pain to watch last year compared to some of the better stories of that year. Well I know you've heard me anticipating this week's episodes in my previous reviews so let's see if Mr. Harness has learnt his lesson from last year. It's a good job I watched the anniversary episode in preparation for this fortnight's unintelligently named episodes because otherwise I'd be completely lost. I know we have this little intro sequence explaining what happened in the 50th anniversary, but in all honesty, do we really need it? Like, who forgot all of the events that happened then? It was one of the most well-received episodes of all time and it seems strange to assume people just forgot about it. I am glad, however, that this sequence was only a minute long and was quite snappy, so it didn't take up too much of the episode. Our first scene is a pre-recorded message from the Osgoods about their task of housing the Zygons. We quickly cut to one of the worst made graves I've ever seen. My sister? Who on earth would have such a stupid grave like that? I thought she was disintegrated as well. Has an empty casket just been put into the ground? What a waste of good resources. If it was just a gravestone, fine, sure, whatever, but this is just so nonsensical, I just burst out laughing. I'll say for one thing that the past three episodes have consistently made me laugh out loud at least once over how bad this show is. Oh God, the Zygons are coming. Oh god, I need to write a Facebook status. I'm stuck under a desk. Hashtag help me. So Osgood gets captured and the Doctor is clearly not playing what we hear. Then we cut to London in the present day and the Doctor tries to get in contact with Clara. Hi, this is Clara Oswald. I'm probably on the tube or in outer space. I personally think this is a euphemism for getting high. Back at unit we see a portrait or photograph of the first Doctor framed on a wall, which is a nice little easter egg in case you didn't see this. So what we have then is this footage of Osgood being captured and they state the quality isn't very good but it's very bloody obvious it was shot on a full HD camera with some fuzz and a black and white filter put over the top. You can also tell because the camera moves like it's on a dolly or a crane and in order for them to zoom in that well it must have been good quality so whatever this woman is going on about it being bad quality is clearly talking out of her ass. Back to the Doctor, I can't quite understand why there aren't a group of paranoid parents trying to get the Doctor arrested considering there's a middle-aged man trying to talk to these two seven-year-old girls who clearly want nothing to do with him. On the contrary, I think this segment was quite amusing and the humour displayed here is reminiscent of David Tennant's, especially the comment about the blobbiness. The Doctor then witnesses firsthand the abduction of the girls and we see Osgood's interrogation video. I love how the Zygons had enough time to take these three separate shots and then edit them all together, despite they could have just shot one long take for that video. Why couldn't that have happened? Osgood is reading from a piece of fucking paper, it's not exactly like she could forget her lines at this point. Clara then comes onto the scene and this awfully jolly music comes along as she takes off her helmet. The tension and atmosphere created for the past nine minutes is destroyed so quickly so we can have a bit of time to relax, just in case you're so emotionally unstable that you need breaks from the adventure to remind yourself that everything is okay when Clara's around. She tries to respond to the Doctor but comes across a child instead which despite having 127 missed calls from him and that normally indicates it's something important, she decides to prioritise the child instead. She then breaks into the lad's apartment and we have the first of two scenes where somebody calls out into a dark corridor as if they are going to get a response, which if my knowledge of horror conventions are correct, they never do. 
When Clara stumbles across the parents, it seems odd that they behave so fucking weirdly considering I thought Zygons were masters of disguise. Clara's Zygon is pretty convincing throughout the episode, so why these two are acting like planks of wood, I'll never know. We jump back to the Zygon polyp and the unit members discuss what happened after the 50th anniversary episode. What confuses me, however, is why there weren't more people assigned to Osgood's task. If you only have two people assigned to this project, then it'll easily be overrun. This problem of Osgood being captured and the Zygon Zygons becoming a nuisance again just becomes so easily solvable if you just assigned more people to the same task that Osgood was on. Unit gets sent another video of the High Commanders being executed before our eyes. Once again, the quality seems too good for a hostage video, but at least this one was done in one take. The biggest problem I have with the Zygons is their iconicity. If their design wasn't so laughably stuck in the 70s, I don't think I would have such an issue with them. This is the first time the bad guys seem to have a decent plan and their actions have consequences that build tension. Their transforming ability is a chaotic problem that, especially considering there are so many of them, has consequences on the world. This is why I have a problem with the name of the fictional location that Osgood had been taken to. It kind of breaks the realism of the episode when they're travelling back and forth from a location that doesn't actually exist. Having said that, when I googled a location, the only link I could find that claims that this place exists is a website that won't give me any geographical information as to where it is. Google Maps is no help either because it takes me straight to Turkmenistan and anything else just brings up thousands of articles reviewing the most recent Doctor Who episode, most claiming the location to be fictional. Enough fictional geography complaints, let's get back to the episode. The Doctor travels to Turkmenistan, I mean, uh, Turmezistan, and he performs the iconic Nixon peace sign, which I found hilarious considering the Doctor's actually a man of peace and Nixon was very much not. After taking off in his plane, we then have a cool section in the lift where there's all this gross shit coming out of the controller, but the subtle information infiltration of the Zygons is really well represented in this episode. Clara and what's her name then arrive on the set of Flatline and the Doctor arrives in the Welsh hillside. The Doctor arrives very stylishly on the scene and his description of his job role was great. I think Capaldi was one of the highlights for me in this episode as his performance and the script for him in these moments are great to watch. The airstrike on the village is put off and Stuart arrives in New Mexico. She gets held at gunpoint and brought up to speed whilst the cop says some sexual innuendos. They just came for us. They turned into monsters and they came for us. The Doctor travels closer to the slate caverns, I mean, uh, the village, and we have this really stupid segment where the soldiers can't fire on the people that come out of the church despite their orders. There's a part where one sergeant is told to ask his mother a question only she would know the answer to. He asks her for his date and place of birth, yet she dodges the question entirely. I wish he'd been more persistent in that specific line of questioning because the entire regiment then gets killed in the church because they they didn't ask good enough questions. They then blow the bloody doors off the church and the men become reduced to electric bird's nests. The commander then leaves and the doctor hears Osgood moaning through the floor. You'd think it would have made more sense for her to cry out directions to where she was instead of just saying, I'm down here. No shit you're down there. How is the doctor supposed to know how to get down there with you just shouting the same thing at him repeatedly? The doctor descends down a ladder and unchains Osgood. A stupid Zygon then thinks it's a good idea to blow his cover by screaming at the doctor when if he just snuck up behind him he might have had a chance at killing him. However it gets crushed by falling rubble and we jump back to New Mexico where we see all the bins filled with the bird's nest remains of human beings. This is another subtle technique to show their infiltration and a method I very much approve of. Back in the UK, Clara and crew find the Zygon cave whilst a Zygon gets taken onto the Doctor's plane. Osgood is then questioned about whether or not she is a Zygon and we have another mention of hybrids. I'm not sure if this is now going to be the running motif for the series like Bad Wolf or Torchwood or Harold Saxon, but it's quite a weak one really. Like at least last year, Missy gave me something to look forward to at the end of the season. I haven't a clue what on earth's going to happen at the end of this series and I don't even have any speculations either. Or maybe I just don't care. We get inside the Zygon pod cave and we have a really great twist put before us in that Clara has been a Zygon since she tried helping that child. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this was a great twist that I genuinely didn't see coming. This was mainly down to good editing, but great writing too. And maybe I was wrong about Peter Harness because I'm glad that Clara wasn't playing Clara for the entirety of the episode. I'm very happy that the next time trailer for this week's episode didn't have that shot of Clara with the bazooka though, because it would have ruined the twist entirely. Speaking of next time trailer, 
trailers, next week's doesn't have one! This is wonderful! I now have absolutely no idea how the story is going to conclude, which is pretty good. Kill the traitors. Oh fuck. I can't believe you've done this. Stuart then witnesses the Zygon transform and it's so cheap that the camera just pans away from her as she transforms and then pans back again. Are you kidding me? You were doing so well. Well, it's interesting that we don't know if we're seeing a Zygon or Stuart in this shot here considering we didn't see her die. Clara then launches a missile at the plane and it looks like next week we're in for another fucking plane accident. Just like last year's finale. So, did it suck? It certainly wasn't as bad as last week's, but it wasn't anything amazing either. I give this episode a 4 out of 10 because there are some good things here, like the subtleties, the good writing, and the Doctor shines brightly too. But at the same time, we have things that just don't make sense, gullible characters, my sister's grave, and other general annoyances. When tiny things like this crop up as often as they do, it ruins a good story, and overall this episode hasn't really got me that excited for next week. Ugh, itching and scratching. Again. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, stinks. We jump back to the Zygon Polyp and the unit members disguise... <sighs> I can't read, like, every sentence I fuck up. I'm not sure if this is now going to be a running motif for the series like Bad Wolf or Torchwood or Harold Saction... Saction. Ha! <laughs> I'm not sure if this is now going to be the running motif. Motif. My god, I really can't say this line. Stuart then witnesses the Zygon transform and it's so cheap that the camera just pans away from her. Thank you, phone. 